Well, hi there. I'm Sandy Alnock with this month's Create in Color for MFT stamps. And this time I'm going to be using my Copic markers to color some explosive chemicals. This was a really fun card to do. I think I'm in love with this stamp set. And I want to show you first how I stamped the images so that you'll know how I did this. I took a baby wipe and after I inked it up, I wiped off a little bit, just dabbing off the two ears, like right above where the explosions are going to be, because I don't want hard black lines in there. You can get rid of them a little bit with a white pen later, but it's a little easier if you don't have to deal with those black lines. So I'm going to do the same thing with the little girl. I'm going to stamp her kind of close into the little boy so that they're they're kind of snug together in the scene. And she's th therefore going to need both of her ears, uh, well, both sides of her head, I guess, <laughs> cut off a little bit, wiped off because the little boy has the, he has two little bottles in his, his hands, two little beakers, and she only has one, but the other side of the little boy is gonna affect her. So both of them have no sides to their head. <laughs> I know that may look a little weird. This is this all is going to look weird until I get to the point where I'm adding the explosions. So don't worry yet. I always tell people things are a hot mess until they're not. So we're going to just go with it. So hang with me until we get to that point. Now I'm coloring two different skin tones because I want you to see how this kind of thing is affected by the colors that you're using. So on the little boy, he's going to have blonde hair and light skin. And that's going to be a lot easier to deal with the explosion because you're using light colors. But you want them to kind of fade off on the left and right. They don't have to fade off perfectly. And obviously, if you haven't stamped the image all the way out there, you don't know where it ends. So just kind of leave it hanging out there. If you're doing someone that's darker or if you want black hair on the little boy or something or whatever character you're using, you still have to build out from the center. They have to have the normal shading and stuff that you would normally use, but the left and right still need to go lighter. So I'm using darker colors in the center, and then I'm using some dark, some lighter colors out toward the edges because I'm going to put more color in there that's going to push out some of that, but I just need at least a start of having some of the color that should be there if there were no explosions going on. So here's our little boy's hair going in. Just going to throw in some of that that yellow and a couple of browns to help his hair have a little dimension in it but leaving some of that color out on the left and right hand side now you can put more of it in like i said because you can take some of it out as you put the explosion in but for the time being i'm going to try to leave some of that color off of the left and right hand side of him and get it all kind of not super blended because again the explosion is going to take over some of that and then i'll zoom through coloring the rest of this image while i tell you some exciting news if you haven't heard about it yet i am really thrilled to be going to mft in eustis florida in june to teach some classes so i'm going to teach two days worth of classes and i don't know if they'll be filled up by the time you see this video because the announcement went out a couple weeks back, and <laughs> if if it's already full, I'm sorry to taunt you with the idea that you could come in and color together with me, but it's gonna be a fun project. I'm looking forward to teaching a bunch of techniques that involve different kinds of scenes that go with MFT images. So that's kind of what's in my head. I still haven't developed it all, so those who are emailing and wanting to know what colors to buy, I don't have a list yet, but as soon as I do, I will let you know. I want to use some of the newer stamps that are going to be out in February and March before I make final decisions on what we're doing. So that's how long it's going to take me to figure out exactly what markers to tell you to bring. But I'm really excited. I was talking with Kim and Jody about the whole thing, and I'm I'm just excited to go see them and I've seen Kim at CHA a couple of times, but I haven't been in a couple of years, so I haven't seen like anybody in forever because I just haven't really been motivated to go to CHA lately. So I'm excited to connect with the whole MFT team when I get down there. 
going to be a whole heck of a lot of fun. And I hear even my friend Stephanie is going to be there. So Steph, we are going to have a blast coloring together again. It's been a long time. All right, I'm going to slow this down now that we're getting to the explosion, because this is the whole point of this video showing you the explosion part. So I'm starting with a light color that goes with whatever colors in the beaker. So a really pale color and creating the start of whatever that poof of, of toxic, noxious chemical is going to be. And I'm pushing that color into the, the hair colors and the skin colors of both people on either side with that really pale color. You can do it with a colorless blender, but you're going to end up with that weird mottled thing going on, M-O-T-T-L-E-D, because it's trying to push clear color in there. If you push it in with the light version of whatever color you're looking for, it, it's going to look a little more natural, I guess. Well, not that these look very natural because they're green and pink and yellow poofies. But I'm adding a little darker color to it because I wanted a little more powerful color just in a little blobs and then blending it with the lighter color to make it a little bit softer because I don't necessarily want to have big marker strokes. I want it to look really super soft and blended. You can also go over this one more time with the colorless blender if you want, but here I wanted a little more of my Y17 because why not? That's just yeah, everybody has to have Y17 on every card, don't they? At least I do. So next I took a cotton ball, and I've showed this technique before on my blog, taking a cotton ball and dipping it into white pigment ink. So the snow pigment ink pad, if you can excuse my big fat fingers, um, I'm just tapping it on with the cotton ball. And I wish I had seen that my hand was just covering up everything that I'm doing there, but you can see the effect of it afterward. It adds a little graininess to it and lightens it up and adds a little bit of that, that kind of denseness to the little cloud. And then you can go in as well with a white pen and draw in some actual circle bubbles or dot bubbles so that it looks like there's a little more to it even. And you can go crazy and spend all kinds of time making your little poofies look as fancy as you wish. So I'm just going to add a little bit of ground for them so they have something to stand on. Look like they're grounded to the earth. And that is about all. I'm going to add a little bit to the card, but the coloring was just so much fun to do. I have a feeling I'm going to be coloring these images quite a bit. And I added the sentiment, you make my beaker bubble, because I thought that was hilarious. So there you go. A cute little couple enjoying their science class. And I hope you've enjoyed this video. If you did click the like button, I will hopefully see some of you in Florida in June.